Let us rejoice and be glad and give glory to God, the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace for our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. To begin our celebration, let's take a moment of quiet reflection. Look for those moments of grace and give God thanks for his many gifts. Let us ask forgiveness from, from our God for our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners redemption. Christ, have mercy. Lord, Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Enable us, we pray, Almighty God, to proclaim the power of the risen Lord, that we who have received the pledge of his gift may come to possess all he gives when it is fully revealed. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Be seated, listen to the word of God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. Thus Joseph, also named by the apostles Barnabas, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite, Cypriot by birth, sold a piece of property that he owned, then brought the money and put it at the feet of the apostles. The word of the Lord. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is king, in sweater and slender robe. Robed is the Lord and girt about with strength. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. And he has made the world firm, not to be moved. Your throne stands firm from of old, from everlasting you are, O Lord. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. Your decrees are worthy of trust indeed. Holiness then defeats your house, O Lord, for length of days. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it will, and you can hear it, the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, how can this happen? Jesus answered and said to him, you are the teacher of Israel, and you do not understand this? Amen, amen, I say to you, we speak of what we know. And we testify to what we have seen. But you people do not accept our testimony. If I tell you about earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Last week, uh, that first week known as the octave, the first eight days of Easter, 
we were filled with resurrection appearances, Jesus appearing to, to his, uh, the apostles, to various followers of his, to, to a collection of people. Um, this week, our readings, uh, as we, we delve into the Acts of the Apostles, uh, bring about, uh, tell us what, what that resurrection brought about. Um, our gospel today is from early in the gospel of St. John, um, and Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus. But Nicodemus is the foremost Pharisee. He is the great teacher uh, in Israel. In fact, Jesus recognizes him as that. Um, uh, he said, you are the teacher of Israel. He is, he is proclaiming him to be the, the chief rabbi. He is the one who's teaching in, in the, the rabbinic schools. He's the one who's training other men to become rabbis. And he says, and yet you don't understand. Um, and what's he talking about there? Well, he's talking about who Jesus is and what Jesus is. Uh, he's the Messiah. And he's trying to correct Nicodemus's idea of what the Messiah will be because like uh, he is the greatest uh, teacher of, uh, of uh, the prophets and the, uh, and the law. It is the Old Testament, the scriptures that they have in the country. And yet uh, he himself has this idea that the Messiah, the anointed one, the chosen one, the redeemer is gonna be another King David. He's gonna be a military leader an earthly king, and Jesus is saying, no, 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 uh, the, the Messiah is, uh, is a spiritual king, um, because you are flesh and spirit, um, and the flesh is temporary, the spirit is immortal, and he says, you know, uh, we know the wind, uh, we recognize it, we can hear it, we can feel it, uh, but we don't know where it comes from or where it goes, uh, that's what we don't understand the spiritual life. We don't know, we don't really know what that is because our only experience is, is of the physical life. Um, and he's trying to get across them. The Messiah is not gonna be someone who's gonna go out and conquer. He's gonna be someone who, is, who dies for the sins of people. Uh, the son of man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. He's telling him, you need to change your expectations. Our, our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles is now showing us what that early community is. Um, uh, these are the people who are listening to Peter and James and John and Paul and, and Mark and Luke and all these others who are preaching and they, they come to say, yes, I accept the idea. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is my savior. Baptize me. And so they are the baptized. And, and as we read in the early parts of this, we hear you know, they went out and spoke about the good news of Jesus' resurrection. It says, and 3,000 came to be baptized. 5,000 came to be baptized. Sounds like a big deal, but it's a relatively small number of people, um, uh, especially given, uh, you know, Jerusalem was a city that uh, was more than 100,000 people. The Roman Empire had millions. So these little, uh, these are few people and they're scattered around. Um, in this, uh, you know, the parish I grew up in had 4,000 families. It's more, you know, it's two or three times than you the, the, the amount. So these people, the, these early Christians, these first followers of it are kind of like us in, in, a, in a very important way. Um, when there's something that we really are passionate about, when there's something we really hold on to and like, we look for people who think this and, and like the same thing. Uh, so we're trying to find other people who say, yes, uh, this is, uh, Jesus is my Lord and my God. He is my Savior. He is my Redeemer. And so they, they cluster together. They form this small group. And, and so we're, we're looking at what this community life was about. Um, for them, they were few among many uh, people. So they, they concentrated their efforts together. And what did they do? They looked out for each other. They took care of each other. Um, they took those words to heart. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. When I was naked, you clothed me. And so they're providing for each other. Christian charity. Um, they're, they're, they come together in that way. What do these two things tell us? Well, we are those elect today. We are 
the baptized, we are the ones who say yes uh, to the Lord. And he's telling us, care for each other in the same way. Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, give drink to the thirsty, comfort the sorrowing, um, laugh with the rejoicing. Uh, all of these things he's, he's calling us to do is uh, because this is what it means to be part of a Christian community. To be part of a Christian community is become part of that mystical body of Jesus. Um, and that, that's what, we, uh, what we're called to be. Um, for that is what the kingdom of heaven is about. Uh, it's not an earthly kingdom, but it's a spiritual bond that will endure forever. Let's gather our prayers and bring them before our God. Begin another prayer for peace in our world. Yes, for peace in Ukraine, but in all places where uh, violence reigns, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the church in gratitude for God's word and God's sacraments. We pray to the Lord. Pray for our nation, as that God watch over and bless this. We pray to the Lord. Pray for our ministry of Catholic education, ministry begun by Jesus and continuing to this day here at St. Francis, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Pray for healing uh, for Jeff Bruner, the, the father of uh, some of our graduates uh, who undergo heart surgery tomorrow, that God may uh, send his healing graces upon him, be with those who care for him, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For your intentions. Lord, you are firm. Lord, you are firm. Loving God, we come before you, bringing you our hopes and desires. These few we've given voice, others we hold silently in our hearts, but we offer all of them to your Son, Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let's say, you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the bread we offer you. It is to give to the earth the work of human hands that we come to us the bread of life. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine that work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for us. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all is risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers of the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the blue fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when Sarp was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. We poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy. To be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jeff, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Francis, St. Clair, and all the saints that please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching to raise our voices in the prayer given to the church by Jesus himself. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a greeting of God's peace. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
The Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead. So enter into his glory. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present age and ensure for us eternal gladness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in a right manner on this earth be united with him in the homeland of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.